Hello, in this video we prove Stirling's formula which provides an approximation to the n factorial value. Now to show that those two are approximately equal or at least they converge in you know asymptotically we'll show that the ratio converges to one. And that means this numerator is roughly equal to this and that's what that's saying. Um, one note is I use this formula in a video intuitive explanation on why gamma of n is equal to n factorial. I have two parts, one a little more mathematical, one a little more graphical. And I use the result, but I didn't prove it, so I always like to go back and, and prove things. So here, that's what we're going to show. Now, to keep this what I think is very understandable, we prove seven different little parts and then put them all together to make the result very easy to understand. So the first one is we want to show that this uh, inequality holds. And these double factorials are like a factorial where in, you know n factorial is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2. Double factorial means you go down by 2. n times n minus 2 times n minus 4. And you keep going until you get to a 2 or a 1, whichever is first. And that depends upon whether n is even or odd. And so these, these inequality holds. So let's prove this first. So if we let i sub k, and i stands for integral, and it's going to represent this, the integral of the cosine of x raised to the kth power integrating from 0 to pi over 2. And k goes from 0, you know, 1, 2 to infinity. Now, because of the length of the video, I'm going to point to other videos I have that prove this. Now, from, video, uh, from my video's useful trig integral, we prove this almost identical. We, we go from 0 to pi, but here's 0 to pi over 2. But otherwise, it's 100% the same as this. And then the results we present are in factorials and gamma functions. So then I have a video called the relationship between the double factorial and the gamma function. So it takes these gamma functions and puts them in double factorials. Then, um, and using these two videos, it's, it's, it's actually quite easy, quite straightforward to show that they equal this. So i to the 2n is equal to this, and i to the 2n plus 1 is this. So it's essentially if n is even, or let me rephrase that, if k is even, it's this. If k is odd, it's this. Now note that the cosine of x raised to the k is actually a decreasing function in k because this is between 0 and 1, and when you uh, raise it to powers, it actually gets smaller, so it decreases. So that, and so that means the, this ik decreases, right? If we're integrating from 0 to pi, and each k, this gets a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller, it means this integral gets a little bit smaller. So that means that if we look at uh, i to the 2n minus 1, that's going to be a little bit bigger than the next one, i to the 2n, which is going to be a little bit bigger than, you know, each successive k gets a little bit smaller. Well, then we're done, right? So i to the uh, 2n, which is here, which is this result, i to the uh, 2n plus 1 is this. And then, of course, you can stick in i to the 2n minus 1 and get this. So this result does follow. Now, next, we're going to let qn, so this is point 2 of 7, uh, Qn, we're going to let be this. Well, this is combinations. 2n choose n over 2 raised to the 2n power. We're going to show that this limit, you know, Qn times square root of n times pi, is 1. Now, we want to unpack Qn, first of all. So this is uh, n factorial uh, divided by n factorial, and then 2n minus n factorial, which is this. And of course, this just comes along. Now, the 2n factorial comes across, but notice that this is like n factorial squared, and this is 2n squared, so we, we write it in this fashion. Um, now, 
there's two of these. There's two sets. So if we just look at, at one of these, not, not the squared part, and in factorial, there's n terms. And here there are n two. So we take a two times each term. So here, you know, an n factorial is this. So it's um, n, you know, n times two, n minus one times two, n minus two times two, all the way down to one times two. So this piece gets unfolded to this. Now, um, in here, so now we have squared, we have squared. One of those is 2n double factorial, right? It goes down by 2 each time. Now, the other two, uh, since this is 2n factorial, it cancels with every other term, which then leaves 2n minus 1 double factorial, because every term gets canceled with one of those. So this uh, qn can be thought of as this. Now, by... 1, we know this result holds, right? So uh, Qn, which is this, which we'd put there, and that's exactly what we showed in step 1, 100%. So now what we want to do is make this top part a 1. So that means we have to multiply everything times this reciprocal, right? because then the, those cancel and we get one and then it, it's carried through. But let's look at this in a little more detail. So here is the, um, we just bring it down, but it's reciprocal, right? Then we multiply it by one, two n double factorial divided by two n double factorial, right? Now, here, so we said qn was this, which is this piece here, so that's what this is. Now here, 2n double factorial and 2n minus 2 double factorial, every term in the bottom cancels with every one of those except for that first one, 2n, and that's what this is. So now when we multiply this times this, uh, this first piece times that, we get 1. Okay, so multiply star, which is this equation, by qn, 2n minus 1, which is this. So this becomes a 1. And then when we multiply this times this, the 2's cancel. We're left with n pi qn squared, because there's two of them. And then we multiply you know, this times that, and we get this nice uh, double factorial expression. But we get lots of cancellations here. So every term here cancels with every one of those, except for the 2n. And then um, every one of these cancels with every term here except for the 2n plus 1, and that's what we get here. So this is this, and then we get a 1. Now let's let n go to infinity. So this clearly converges to 1 because it is 1, and this converges to 1. So anything that's in between them also converges to 1. So that means this quantity converges to 1. Uh, Qn is always positive. n's positive. That's positive. So if we take the square root of both sides, since it's a continuous function, that implies that this converges to 1. And that's what we wanted to show, was Qn square root of n pi converges to 1. Now step 3, we define this ratio. Remember, we wanted this ratio to limit to 1. But let's, let's think of it as a sequence. So let's call it Cn. And each successive n... We're hoping that the numerator and denominator get closer and closer and converge to one. But so the next two or three bullets, we're going to deal with this sequence here. First of all, let's show that the ratio of CN plus one divided by CN, so that's you know the ratio of each additional term is this e raise you know times um, this quantity. So this is like e to the one times this. Um, and to do that, we, you know, we start with n plus 1, and then we multiply it by 1, n factorial over n factorial, and that's where we get n plus 1 factorial over n factorial. Now, notice in Cn, well, let's look at the denominator first. We have Cn is equal to this. So if we multiply this denominator to the other side, we have an expression for n factorial. 
which is what this is, right? It's CN and then N and it's that. Now, we could put CN plus one and then all these terms go to N plus one. And that means we have an expression for N plus one. So we take all these, multiply it over, and that's what we get here, right? N plus one raised to the N plus one, E to the minus to the, right? So that, that's what we get. Now, this ratio here, let's just kind of separate from the pack because that's what we want. Now here, uh, all the E's cancel with here except for one minus one, that's what this is. Now we have N over N plus one. Uh, we take one of these N plus ones and bring it here. And, the, and then the rest, we just write this as a ratio. And here the uh, square root of two pi's cancel and we're left with uh, N plus one over N you know, to the one half. Then these can combine to N plus one over n raised to the n plus one half. Now let's solve for this. We divide both sides by n plus one, and that becomes a one. And then when we divide this over, we get this, which is what we wanted to show, that the, this ratio is this quantity. Now, step four of seven, I want to introduce the hermite hadamard inequality. <laughs> and I have a video called the hermite hadamard inequality, and we proved this result. But for this uh, video, we're just going to display the result and show an example. So here we have a convex function from the interval a, b, and, it, and it's onto the reals. It's, uh, f is convex, then this relationship holds. And let's, let's do an example. So let's let f of x be this convex function. And the a and b, we're going to go from minus a half to a half. So this piece here, so we have uh, minus a half plus a half over two, but this is zero, right? So that's f of zero. And f of zero is one over n plus one half, right? And that's less than or equal to this integral. So it's one over you know, one half minus, minus a half, which is one, one over one. So we can sort of ignore that. And then we're integrating from minus one half to half of f of x dx, which is this. Now, this right here is the log, you know, the antiderivative is the log of n plus one half to the plus x. And then we enter, then we evaluate it at these values. So we stick in a half we get that and then it's minus and we stick in this and we just get in but this is um, you can think of it as the ratio of n plus 1 over n which is the same as 1 plus 1 over n now so this value is greater than or equal to this value so let's multiply both sides by n plus a half and we get this right um, now we could take that as an exponent and then the log of 1 plus 1 half raised to the n plus a half is strictly greater than 1, right? And that's what we wanted to show in step 4 using this hermite hadamard inequality. So step 5 of 7, we want to show that Cn is, is a decreasing sequence that is bounded uh, specifically below by 0. Since it's decreasing, then that becomes important. It's also bounded above, but we're... In, more important that it's bounded below and have that so that means it has a limit c okay so let's prove this now remember cn was that ratio that we want it to limit to one so but first of all we need to prove that a limit exists and that's kind of what we're doing here so now from four we know that this is true so if we take that to the exponent and then e both sides that means we get um, e to the one, right? And then e, the e and the log cancel, and we're just left with uh, this quantity here. Now, if we divide this to the other side, you know, or, or multiply both sides, you know, times that minus exponent, then it, then it's this is less than one. So that's what we get here. This quantity is less than one. But this quantity we showed was that ratio 
of C n plus 1 to Cn. So that says the sequence is actually decreasing. The ratios of each successive term gets a little bit smaller. So now, and this, and note that for all n, Cn is positive. If you go back and look at that, it, it's obvious to the most casual observer. So thus, it's bounded below by zero. And I have a video, by a video, monotone sequences of real numbers. We show that when it's bounded and decrease, monotone decreasing, that it must have a limit. So Cn has a limit, and let's call it C for just, because we have to pick something. We, and, and our goal is to show that that's one, but right now all we know that it, it, it exists, and let's call it C. Let's show that C is positive. Now, by a video that I have called Sandwich and Sequences of Real Numbers, it says that if we know the sequence converges to some number C, and every term in our sequence is strictly positive, and this for all n, that means that the limit C has to be strictly greater than zero. Okay, and that, and that, and the, the, this video we proved that. So now we know the limit is positive. Now let's show that the limit of Cn goes to one. Now from property two, and this is property seven, so it's the last one before we get to the proof. So, um, so from two, we know this is equal to one. The limit of this quantity is one. And uh, from three, we defined Cn to be this quantity, right? And that, you know, we wanna show that it goes to one. So now let's, let's plug in this right here and look at that. Well, Qn was this. So it's 2n factorial over, you know, remember it was 2n choose n over two to the 2n. So this is the Qn, we just expanded it and this is that. So now let's expand this again. So this piece here, let's just take and write over here. And we're gonna do something very similar to what we did before. So if, we, if this was C to the 2n, then that would be 2n factorial, and all these would be 2n raised to the 2n, you know, they get changed. So let's multiply that other side and we get an expression for 2n factorial. That's what this is. Remember this divisor is over here. So now, let's think of this as n factorial squared. So let's get an expression for n factorial, multiply that over, and that's what this is. And so since it's n factorial squared, we get cn squared, n raised to the 2n, e raised to the minus 2n, and that's squared, so it just comes out as 2 pi n. Now things start canceling. You know, the E's cancel, these N's cancel, that two raised to the two N cancels with this. Uh, the uh, square root of four is two, so that cancels. Square root of pi, square root of pi cancels with pi. The square root of N, square root of N cancels with N. So we're left with C to the two N divided by C N squared. Now we know that this converges to one. So that says this ratio converges to one. But the sequence itself, we said converges to C. So C, you know, this sequence converges to C, and this one converges to C squared, and they're strictly positive, you know, by point number six. So if this ratio, C divided by C squared is equal to one, that means C has to be one. It's the only number that satisfies that. Now there is a, um, yeah, it could, yeah, that's it. It's the only number that satisfies it. So now, let's prove the result. Sterling's formula. Cn, which is this, converges to one. That says this numerator gets very, very close to this, and they're approximately equal. So the proof is one line. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> anyway, I... I thought this video turned out really well. I think each step is very, very understandable, which makes the proof of Sterling's formula very understandable. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.